Thank you. Um, regarding the question you have asked, the government are making a lot of effort regarding enforcing rules that make some people not to be touchable. Because that is where the problem lies. Those rules are already there specified that when there is any form of discrimination based on caste, these people should be persecuted. But when it is not followed up, that is where the problem lies. So that has nothing to do with abolishing the reservation. Because reservation, what we are trying to remove is another system that will perpetuate the same form of discrimination persisting in the society. So that is the focus we are looking on. We are not denying the fact that some people, even with the rules in place, they still falter this rule, they still break them by discriminating people based on where they are come from. But once those labels are no longer there, and there are no means of identifying people based on where they come from, or which class they belong to, then discrimination gradually with time will die out. But as long as we keep the system that will make those labels to persist, to continue to exist, then discrimination will exist. They will continue to uh, exist in the society. Thank you. Moving on to the question team number 16 for population can raise their question. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Madam. Uh, I have a straight from team number 16 representing National University of South. So, Madam Speaker, two things in this question. First, we're going to talk about the principal state of education, and second, on the practicality of the system. Understand that when US President Lyndon Johnson laid down the basis for affirmative action, he said that he did not take a man who for years has been promoted by chains, liberated, liberated to the starting action.